welcome to my channel. My name is Zena. Um, so I'm coming back to you guys as promised with um, the Excel that represents my budget. I told you guys I was going to share with you how I build in elegance into my budget. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So to begin, you're going to need a copy of your pay stop. Um, I like to enter all that information from my gross income to my taxes and Medicare just everything that comes out of your paycheck before you even see it. I like to enter all that information in because it gives me like a true representation of where my money is going, right? So according to census.gov, the average income earner in the United States earns about, uh, in 2017, it was about $61,372. And according to wallethack.com, um, in 2019, it's roughly $36,000. So I'm going a, a little less than what the average income earner ends, and I made this budget based on a $60,000 income earner. I know some people are going to fall below this, and some other people are going to be way above this. The same is the same concept regardless of where you are in your income. The bottom line is you want to ask yourself, what, what do I love? What do I enjoy? What is it I want to keep doing? And find ways to build that into your budget and move each way. So let's get started with a $60,000 income earner. I've gone ahead and listed out the federal taxes and Medicare. I know in some states they um, take out income, um, state income taxes. I live in Texas. It's not anything we have to be concerned with, so I don't have that on my budget sheet. That's something that applies in your state. Make sure to add this um, to, to your budget sheet. And by the way, if you guys are interested in a copy of this budget sheet, just let me know. That way you don't have to raise them to bill. You can either leave me a comment below or send an email to easybands at gmail.com or you can download it from my website, easybands.com. All right, let's get into it. So you get a copy of your pay stub and you want to list all this information, beginning from what you earn monthly, the taxes deducted, um, hopefully 401k is part of your contribution. Some people do Roth, some people do regular for traditional 401k. I personally like the Roth 401k because I want my money to grow, grow tax-free. So I do lot. You also want to add your whatever it is, expenses that go out of your paycheck for medical insurance and life insurance, if that's something that you have. Once you get all of that out of the way, um, HSA is something that I also contribute to because I know that I am going to get sick at some point or my kid is going to get sick at some point. Um, it is tax-free dollars that you can use to wash medical expenses. So it's something that I build into my budget. Tithing giving is also a very important one to me. Um, the recommended amount is 10%. Um, for this budget, we're currently at 8%. It just means we have some ways to go. Um, I like to put the percentage, what the what the percentage represents of my income because it gives you a true picture of where your money is going. Other things that um, I have to pay within my mortgage, savings, baby, electricity, water, and gas. Netflix is not a necessity, but it's something that we enjoy. So we definitely build that into our budget. My husband likes to do little works around the house from time to time. Um, we like to create room for that in our budget. It's not something that we do every month, but we like to create room in the budget. So whenever we want to do it, we know we have a little stash somewhere. HOAs, we know we have to pay it every year, so we definitely build that into our budget. Groceries, this is where we make a whole lot of savings and find ways to, to save a whole lot as much as possible here. And I can make a video on some of the things that I do to increase my savings in this area. We love to travel, so we definitely make that a line item. Going out on dates is important to us. We make that a line item, so we're either going for drinks or we're going for a full meal. Sometimes we go on cheap dates that only cost us 20 bucks. And the stash just keeps growing for when we want to go on a more expensive date. Miscellaneous random, thing comes, random things come up. We, an example would be we need to buy charcoal for the grill or wood pellets or, um, you know, like random stuff that comes up. We also like to have a stash for that. Insurance, um, personal health, um, personal care is also very important. Um, I like to get my nails done occasionally. My husband likes to get his haircut um, every so often. We like to make room for, for that in our budget as well. 
Um, and of course, transportation is a necessity. Giving is also a very important part of our life. We go to birthday parties, we go to weddings, we we like to socialize, and some of, sometimes it requires you to buy gifts. We don't go on these activities every day or every month, but when we do, we like to know that we have a stash for giving. So these are the typical line items you find in our budget. And if so, you just have to look at your lifestyle, the lifestyle you want, and, and create a budget that truly represents the things you want to do and find ways to, to save that. So what we do every month, I've listed all the months. So what we do every month is we look at our bank account, the credit card statement, and we put down all our expenses. We have different categories um, here to select from. Whatever category it falls in, we, we pick that. Okay? And um, let's say, for example, here, every month we're supposed to put in $420. So we put that as a line item because we're showing our bank statement as a transfer in. So we put that in here, we put the form in Let's say we bought a cooler and we'll classify that as savings to use and we'll put that here. And we'll do that for the rest of the month. What you would see on this sheet is that the $450 showed here, it was the planned amount we wanted to put in, it's in. The actual amount, it pulls it from, okay? It, it takes it from, from that, that this table that we just looked at. And here it also uses the savings use and it also pulls that from that table. So you don't have to do manual computation as long as what you, your entry here is done perfectly. When you come here, you should just see like a representation of everything that has happened that month. Okay. So you go to your bank account and make sure that everything balances. Okay. So if initially your previous balance in your bank account was zero dollars, fine, no worries. It means you've only put in $425 and you've spent, you put in $425 as planned, you spent $150. When you come here, at the end of the sheet where it says your cumulative balance, you see that your cumulative balance is how much? $275. Okay? Which is pretty much $425 minus it. So this is what you have. Now, if you go to your bank account and this is not what you see in your savings account, you definitely want to look through your entry and make sure that what you entered is correct. Um, this is what I do for all the months. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. One more thing I wanted to show you guys. You know how I talked about, you know, having a representation of everything that you have and put it in putting it in percentages because it gives you like a good picture of what your expenses are. I like to do a pie chart, right? To see where my most expenses are. Clearly my mortgage is the biggest part of my my expense. Okay. And the other thing are taxes. Taxes as a whole. Uh, the next big things are just giving and saving, and the rest are little items that come together. Um, this is not a necessity, guys. This is just something that I like to do. Okay, and then once you get your budget situated and it works for you, you've accounted for everything. So one thing that I also like to do on this part of the Excel, which I need to unhide. Um, is in the event that I got a raise, let's say I got a thousand dollar raise, I would just go in there and increase that value and notice how it just recomputes all the numbers. So when I get a raise, everybody gets a raise, they, they get a raise, everybody gets a raise. Um, one thing that I also like to do is just to review to make sure that everything adds up um, to 100%, right? So I'll look at, for instance, um, your taxes obviously is going to be different based on your income raise. Um, I'm looking at my tide. Uh, previously, it was 8%. So uh, I went ahead and increased it to 10% since that's something that I, I knew I, I have to increase 
Um, same thing with the savings, um, it's still at 9%. Let's say for instance, the mortgage used to be 25%. I don't want it to, I don't want to increase it, right? Um, from from $1,250,000 to $1,500,000. So I would decrease that 25% to maybe 21% to get back to the original number that I had at twelve fifty. All right. Um, I would also go ahead and increase my Roth 401k contribution to 10%. The whole time I'm checking at the bottom to make sure that at the end of the day, everything totals to 100. So um, HOA, I might not want to change it, but it's only 1%. So not, not a big deal. So I'll go ahead and hide this back. It's just a little extra, um, something that I also have in my budget I wanted to show you guys, okay? Um, on each of the individual sheets every month, there is a part that's also hidden. These are all the categories. So if you're using this worksheet and you have new categories that so you have debt payment, whatever, you can always come here and edit it. So that's um, pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you found this very useful and feel free to leave some comments if you need clarifications on any of the things that I went over, I'm happy to dive into details. So even if you need some help, you know, I'm very happy to help anyone that um, needs it. I love doing this kind of stuff. So I hope you guys found this useful. Thank you for watching my video. Enjoy. Take care, guys. Goodbye.